Welcome, everyone, to the Firing the Man podcast. On today's episode, we are very excited to chat with Kathleen Selmans. Kathleen spends most of her time helping time-strapped digital entrepreneurs, speakers, coaches, and freelancers triple their income through a strategic approach to selling their digital products. Many people created a digital product because of the allure of passive income, but many of those digital products never turned into passive income. Kathleen works with these people to create a lucrative income stream that runs on autopilot. She teaches experts how to create marketing engines, new ways to sell digital products that don't include a slide deck, and the pricing strategies that will win. She's learned most of her lessons the hard way but has found wild success both in her business and the businesses she has consulted with. When she's not at her desk, you can find her on a yoga mat, exploring the world with her husband and two kids at a local farmer's market and enjoying the sheer pleasures of living. Be sure to stay tuned as Kathleen shares how to find $100,000 laying around in your Google Drive. Welcome to the show, Kathleen. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So to start things off, can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today? Sure thing. I have been working online for a really long time. We were talking about this the other day, how internet years are a little bit like dog years. And when I got my start, it was 2011 and WordPress had just gotten like rich text. It was very exciting. But we were still taking photos from actual cameras and (laughs) uploading the anyway the world's changed a lot since that time and i started in the personal finance space as a public way to get out of debt and the personal finance space i found out is a really lucrative niche financial services have high margin they're able to spend money on content and so i found myself in a group of people who sort of backed into money on the internet, which was very exciting, especially in the days before some of these algorithm changes and before Facebook started charging for ads and all kinds of like frontier level stuff. But I started working on my journey out of debt. And then once I got out of debt, I got bored. It turns out I didn't really want to do much in the personal finance space anymore. So I joined a friend who was building a podcast in that space and I worked behind the scenes to make it profitable. And Then when I realized I really was done, done with personal finance, spend less, earn more, invest the difference, that's personal finance. The mechanism to helping people who had great ideas make more money was so much more appealing to me. So in 2018, I started on my journey toward digital marketing. So sort of just everything under that umbrella. I was making websites and sales funnels and helping other people realize their path toward profitability. And just recently, I've made a bigger pivot into channeling all of that experience and teaching people in a group setting how to find their leveraged income stream. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your background. It sounds like you've been, you have a very diverse background and a lot of experience. I really like the the analogy of the personal finance, summed it up in, in a few words. So that's pretty cool. A question for you, uh, where where do you think most people are leaving money on the table in their businesses? Actually, it can come down to one word, just. So anytime you start to tamp down your expertise by using the word just, that's where you should look deeper. Meaning that as an expert, and we talked about this offline, but as an expert, you have a PhD level of knowledge in your industry. And the more you know, the more you think everybody knows. And when you start thinking about what you could possibly teach and you think, well, I don't know, it's just X, Y, Z. Everybody knows how to do that. That's where I would say, stop. Okay. To dive in a little bit more on this, when we talk about digital products, there's right, there's online courses, there's podcasts, there's YouTube. What have been some of the more lucrative avenues for for these digital products? You know, it's funny, that's a great question because most people, at least most digital creators that I work with, very much think about online courses, beginning and ending with like, should I go with Teachable or think of it? And if you take a step back, I know somebody who's making almost seven figures, if not already seven figures on Instagram templates, sending out 30 new Instagram templates every month. So the most lucrative 
are the ones that you can do in the shortest amount of time possible. If it's easy for you to create, then it's easy for your audience to implement, and then it makes it easier for them to give you money. <laughs> okay. All right. That, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So at, at the beginning of the episode, I had mentioned that there's $100,000 in my Google Drive. How do we find it? So can we dive into that? Absolutely. What I believe is that anybody who's been doing this even a couple of years has a $100,000 revenue stream sitting on their Google Drive or their Dropbox or it, it really doesn't matter somewhere in their systems. And it's so usually I work with service providers. I know you guys are a lot of people listening to this are in the e-com space, but in, in service, there's so much that goes into how you deliver a service that you could teach, let's say web design. You could teach people how to do their own mockups in Adobe XD or something like that and teach your exact design process. Or, and this is probably more helpful for the people listening to this, you could teach what you wish you had known two, three, five years ago that if you had known then that you would have gotten to where you are now in a shorter period of time. Sure. Now to to expand on that a little bit, like you're saying essentially share what knowledge that you have that can help someone else skip the line and, and catch up or, or advance in two or three years from the knowledge that you have. Exactly. And it's especially, you know, with, with e commerce people, you guys know your margins, you know your you know all of the, the spreadsheety things that if you could increase or decrease the amount of time it took or you know it's the same sort of thing where let's say you had a email sequence that helped with abandoned cart issues that recovered ten twenty thousand dollars in your busy season right let's say you had something like that well that's absolutely worth it to sell even if you didn't templatize even if you just gave away exactly what it was you did where you said, okay, the first time they had the abandoned cart, they got this email. And this is what it looked like for mine. You want to change it out for yours because you don't sell this product. And then extrapolating that so that you can tie anything that you would create to, they always say, like a tangible result, time or money. It's money. It, like everything we should be doing is either making somebody or saving somebody money. I like this. sort of to make sure I have this right. And here's what's been going on in my mind. My background is accounting. I love Excel and Excel is my art form. Okay. Is your life different than mine? <laughs> <laughs> I have built some, what I would call Mona Lisa's of spreadsheets. I mean, just really, really in depth looking at profit margins and I've built that for our own business. And, and so if I'm understanding this correctly, that of course is of value to us because I built it for our business, but it's most likely of value to our audience. Is that, is that, am I tracking what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Basically you have this, you turn it into a template so you don't have to give out proprietary information, right? Like you don't, nobody needs to know how much money your company made in 2021 in order to make the spreadsheet work. So you give them the spreadsheet, you make it idiot proof. So you lock literally everything except for what you want them to input. And then you do a detailed step-by-step -step video on how to do it and how to show what it does. You spend, I don't know, 10, 15 hours wrapping that all together. Don't worry too much about delivery of the product because it's, you're really giving them an Excel document so you don't have to pay for, you know, Teachable or whatever for 50 bucks a month for the rest of your life in order to just deliver uh, some sort of product like that. And then the real key is thinking about what happens after they buy. So as e-commerce people know, the very best time to ask for another sale is when their wallet is already open, so to speak. And so when you when you think about like, okay, this is our ROI calculator, some better name than that. And then then it's like, okay, well, do you want to add this really in-depth walkthrough for another X dollars? And then they go to the upsell and it's like, do you want to join a group of people who are working through this together? Yes, no. Do you want to buy an hour of my time so I can walk you through it? Do you want, you know, so you have like an Ascension model so that the, because you can't really sell an Excel template for more than a couple hundred dollars. But you can turn that into a profitable revenue stream by thinking about the upsell path. Okay. Okay. Over to you, Ken. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that David's wheels are spinning. So we'll oh, yeah. help <laughs> an idea session uh, later on, on this. So 
but yeah, also I'm thinking of, so like some things off the top of my head for in the e-commerce space, if you're listening to this, if you're, you know, in the audience, like if you're good at listing optimization, you can document your process. You can capture that. If you're good at um, Excel, like David, you could capture that. Or if you're good at email marketing, like you said, Kathleen, you can capture your, your sequences, your email sequences. So great ideas. And next question that we have, how can, how, how can an entrepreneur create a leveraged income stream? Well, I think e-commerce, it, it's funny because I almost never talk to people in this space. Most of the people that I'm working with are already service providers. They're, they are delivering valuable but intangible things. And so I think e-commerce is much more leveraged than service. You can buy a sweatshirt in the middle of the night. I can make money on that sweatshirt that you bought in the middle of the night. The same is not necessarily true for article writing. I have to be writing in order to make that money. So e-commerce is already leveraged, but but the margins are lower than they would be on digital. In fact, it's sort of the inverse, right? Where you get a 20% margin, let's say, on your merchandise, but you could get an 80% margin on info, on the info that you could use to help build out another site. So things like how do we decide what product we should add? And here's the, if you can get the nerdy spreadsheet calculation to determine whether it makes sense to order whatever. This is where my, you'll see the gaps in my expertise. It starts and ends at e-commerce. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that definitely makes sense. Cool. Over to you, David. This is a follow-up question. And, and if there's not a, if you don't have a good answer to it, we can strike it. No big deal. But one thing that Ken and I have talked a lot about is we like to keep our products that we're selling private because there's not really an online police. And if someone sees what you're selling and, you know, and you have a podcast about e-commerce, obviously like something's going well, we have concern about people competing against us. I'll use a barbershop analogy. If you are the only barbershop in town, you can charge whatever price you want. Our town is global. Like we are competing against everybody. And so for maybe people that you've worked with that have similar concerns, do you have any thoughts on how to, because generally you build the tool for yourself first, and then we kind of like want to strip away sensitive information. So do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. So it's, it's it, because I talked about my, my history, it's sort of what happened when you first start writing about money, you start writing about your journey. And then what happened in 2011, 2012, 2013 is that we all became friends and we would write articles to each other saying, man, this Capital One, this article about Capital One is making me $10,000 a month. And everybody reading that says, well, I should write an article about Capital One also. And to your point, it's the same sort of thing. Like if, if I already know that that's making you money, then I'm just going to go and copy and paste it and publish it too. So what we run into when we recommend how to pull that back is to anonymize it. If you don't want to say that it's a fountain pen, then you can say it's a consumer office good. And this, you know, so, or, you know, it's sort of how you can see in, te in testimonials where we talk about this in some of our services where you want to get really good testimonials, but let's say the, let's say you're a ghostwriter and they signed an NDA and you don't, they don't really want to, you to use their name. Well, you can say I helped a, a senior executive at a fortune 500 company and still know that that person is relatively protected so that you can say the category or the, like how you found it. So, you know, I found a whole bunch of people selling low end pens, but nobody was selling high end pens. So I did that again. Again, bad example probably, but it's what's on my desk. And so helping people like without giving them the end product, you can give them the process that you took to find that product. Okay. That makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know, by to our listeners, eliminating ASIN and SKU and title, you really eliminate a lot of your headaches. And so that I really like that. And that has been I would say that that has been a barrier personally or has prevented me and Ken and I from like moving forward. Or we've even start talked about starting a like a ghost brand or just a brand that we make totally public because which is a lot of extra work keep stay anonymous and so all right so most of our listeners are probably selling physical products and I always like real world examples so I was talking to somebody the other day that has a pet supply company physical products tight margins so what if they're thinking about what kind of digital product can I sell what what would be some steps that they would walk through to kind of like come to that answer. Okay. So pet supply company owner, what's your best selling product? Let's say it's dog food for the sake of argument. Great. 
or dog toys or so maybe we don't sell food. I don't know. So a dog toy. So if that sells better than everything else in your store, better than fish food, better than cat toys, then there's dog lovers in your audience. They're the vast majority of people who buy a dog toy online are extreme dog lovers, right? And so what else do they need? Do they need a community? Do they need, I don't know, some like, so what, what else, what else can they do? Can we, are they corgi owners? Can we do like a corgi club? Can we do a on-demand training for if you, maybe it's maybe it's the thing that sells the best is the the puzzle toy. So maybe it's okay. So I'm guessing you have a working dog. Here are different exercises you can go through with your working dog, wear their brains out so they stop eating your furniture. I like that. I like that. One follow up, and I'm an old fogey, so I would call this a collaboration. But as the kids call it, they call it collapse. Have mm-hmm. you seen situations where somebody can collab with? So like, let's keep this this dog this dog example rolling. Is there a situation where somebody says, I don't know how to train corgis? how to go to the bathroom outside, but there's this really good dog trainer and he specializes in corgis. Could I collab with him? Uh, Have you seen situations like that work out? Yeah, all the time. I have this huge audience of people who are buying corgi food, but I, and I don't know anything about corgis, except that usually they come in pairs. When you see them on the street, you usually don't see one, but, but there's, you know, there's a guy in my town or a guy online. If I can give him all these leads that he doesn't have to work for, yeah, that's a that's a straight affiliate offer right there. Pays better than Amazon affiliates too. I didn't even think about affiliates. I like I, my, my my brain didn't go in that direction, but you're absolutely right. In this example, it'd be beneficial to both parties. Man, I I like this. I I really like this. My the wheels are spinning. Yeah, like interviews like this too that turn into sort of brainstorming sessions because this is where I could spend the entire week and be happy. So let's tie that all up together. Yep. I'm a little lost. So we have we have pet brand owner and and the most popular popular products that they sell are toys and then and just so happens I guess corgis like toys and so they reach out they find a huge celebrity dog trainer of, of cor- corgis and then they reach out and say hey we have huge sales volumes of toys that corgis like can we do a collaboration and then and then you would uh, create a training program and then just funnel it through the other I guess influencer through their platforms yeah or if they're not an influencer and you have the audience of buyers then what you do is you say, hey, how much is lead worth to you? How much are you spending on lead acquisition? Typically, dog trainers will say, I don't know. And so you can say, look, I can give you these a, a great leads, but uh, but and I won't charge you for the leads, but I'll charge you for the ones that turn into customers. So then what makes sense for that? Do you need to raise your price? Do we need? So then that's the conversation that that you can work through. The influencer model works sort of in the opposite, where you give the influencer X dollars, they say, this is a great pen. And then you hope that they sell that, you know, you more than made up for it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's really cool. And I, I'm the same. I, I really enjoy like ideas and uh, the generating process of ideas, brainstorming and whiteboarding and all that. So the next question is kind of like delivery methods, I guess. Let's say we have this, you know, let's say we come up with a, a collaboration. We have a, this training manual, you know, this digital product for training corgis. Now for a physical products brand, you know, what is the best delivery method? Is it, is it social? Is it on the direct consumer website? Is it product inserts inside of the packaging of the products? What do you? What are your suggestions there for marketing or for delivery? So for sales marketing. Yeah. So the channels that you're on. You know, if I tell you to to that TikTok's a really great way to do it, and you've never once opened TikTok, then that's not the best way to do it. So wherever you are most comfortable, wherever that uh, honestly, what I like to say often is that the only two things we own are our web traffic and our email list. And so start with the owned audience, and then next level is whatever social you're best at. Maybe then then whatever social your collaborator is best at, and then take it from there. With delivery. The the, the question always be asking is what does this look like if it's easy? And it, again, if it's easy for you, it's easy for them. And the more the easier it is for them to complete this these trainings, watch the dog videos on you know how to train your corgi to do a, a backflip, <laughs> of whatever whatever it is. However, it's easiest for th- for you to create is usually how it's easiest for them to consume. The easier it is for them to consume, the more likely they are to be a repeat buyer of the info product stuff. Okay. Yeah. No, that's that's super helpful. There's a point 
point that you made at the beginning of that answer that is worth repeating. And that is the only only thing that you own is your web traffic and your email list. Hey, Amazon sellers, the only thing that you own is your web traffic and your email address. And so this is, we've talked on previous episodes about direct to consumer websites. I think that's an excellent point. One other thing that if you use that as your rule, you don't necessarily own your Instagram followers or your Facebook followers because that platform can kick you off at any minute. And so I, I think that's a really valuable point. And I think people that are starting at ground zero ought to think about that is, I'm going to put a lot of effort into this. At the end of it, am I going to have an asset that I fully own? And and so ah, that's that's really good stuff. So turning the corner, let's talk about thewellpaidexpert.com. How do you, tell me about this, this company and how you help entrepreneurs. Yeah, so we do a lot of brainstorming and ideation. What I have is a group program where we take you through in 90 days from ideation to selling your info product. The best ones are the ones we haven't come up with yet. The second best ones are the ones that you've created but never sold because we take a different approach. Because with creators and probably e-commerce website owners as well, is that when you create an info product, you are also the sales team. And so when you're creating it, let's say, let's take your Excel templates for for example. So you've, you've got them, they're set, you've checked the formula 17 times, and then all of a sudden you start doing research and you think, well, I don't know anything more than Excel guy.com over here and you get into a doubt by role and joining my team, joining my group gets you the support that, that you need to get out of that spiral and to also take a sales and marketing approach so that you're not doing any of this work for free. Very often when people get an idea for an info product, they put their heads down and they don't come up until it's done. And th that's the wrong way to go about it because you've not validated whether what you're making is of use to anybody. And so we take a, a totally different approach. We comment your like who are your favorite people to work with and what do they what do they need what are the common questions you're getting from people and how do you feel when you answer them stuff like that to help define and refine what it is that you can offer people that will give you a leveraged income stream very nice very nice so to kind of continue on with this and let's use the excel as an example i have or Ken and I have physical products brands that have nothing to do with Excel. We've built these Excel templates to help facilitate our business, but they don't necessarily have anything to do with our business. And let's pretend like we don't have a podcast or a public platform already built. If someone's looking to sell these, right, they've built the Mona Lisa of Excel sheets, they want to sell it. Where are some places that they could go? And they don't have an audience. Is that your question? Well, let's let's talk about both. So let's start with d no audience and then let's start, then let's go to audience. Because if you don't have an audience, you can do the same sort of thing that e-commerce people do when they have a direct-to-consumer website. They also list it on Amazon. So you do that. You do your, your website. You've got it on your website. And then you also list it on Etsy. There's digital templates and downloads there. It's a lower price point than you could command on your own website. But they have traffic and people are, they have search traffic and they own a lot of that search traffic. And so there's value in that in the digital space. If you already have an audience, but let's say your dog toy people don't really care about the profitability of your online store, you don't have an audience. So you need to go in and create an audience, not an audience necessarily, because this is more like a network. If you've created something that will help people like you, then you should be helping people like you. It will help you stay in business longer. It will help you feel not everybody has a business partner like you guys do. It'll help you feel less lonely if you create a a bigger network and then you have a tool that helps that network, then, you know, if you don't have your own podcast, do what I do and get on other people's podcasts. Very nice. Great ideas. You're really good at, at just coming up with ideas like that. I, I can see that that's your wheelhouse. You. So just a quick shout out to everybody before we get into the fire round. So for all the e-commerce sellers listening, margins are super thin, razor thin more than ever before. And so if you're looking to kind of diversify your revenue streams, your income streams and, and get into a digital product, then the wellpaidexpert.com is, is the place to go and, you know, get surrounded by positive people that will help you along. So, all right. Are you ready for the fire round, Kathleen? I am. Okay. David, did you have any more questions for Kathleen? Real quick. I, I We could stay on this podcast all day long, but real quick, <laughs> you had mentioned good spot. If you don't have an audience, Etsy, lower profit margins, but Etsy is a spot. Is Amazon one as well? I have not seen Amazon work for digital products. Okay. Good to know. All right. Let's get into the fire round. Kathleen, are you ready? Yes. What is your favorite book? Possession by A.S. Byatt. Awesome. What are your hobbies? Yoga. I don't think I have a second one. 
Ooh, what is the one thing that you do not miss about working for the man? Wearing shoes. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that answer. What do you think sets apart successful entrepreneurs from those who give up, fail, or never get started? The ability to take it seriously. Excellent. David, you want to close out the show? Absolutely. Kathleen, if people are interested in, in getting in touch with you or, or working with the wellpaidexpert.com, what would be the best way to do that? Head over to my website. Speaking of owned traffic, head over to the wellpaidexpert.com. Awesome. And to all of our listeners that are driving, keep the eyes on the road. We'll post that in the show notes. So Kathleen, I want to thank you for being a guest on the Firing Man podcast, and we're looking forward to staying in touch. Yeah. Thank you, guys. This is fun. 